Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're coming to you from uh, Cumulo's office in Seattle, Washington. Uh, one of the things we're going to do while we're here is talk about uh, their latest announcement. But before we do, we're going to talk a little bit about the state of the file system market. Joining me to help with that conversation is Jason Sturgeon. He's a senior product manager at Cumulo. Jason, thank you for joining us today. Very happy to be here. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the file system market as you guys see it. Okay. So um, we are what we would refer to as software-defined storage. And so software-defined storage is kind of a loaded term. Yeah. It can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. There, It ranges from you run Windows on something and you run a piece of software on it and it runs on in lots of different places sure. or to something that looks much more like an appliance. And so there's quite a spectrum there. Right. But the real value of software-defined storage in general is that it lowers cost for the customer but and it really avoids lock-in. I'm not tied to one appliance or one vendor forever. I have flexibility to deploy that in multiple locations. Okay, that makes sense. And so we really deliver on that value by having this ground up approach that we have to our product. And so I'd like to talk a little bit about how we interact with hardware okay. and how that delivers real value to the customer. Yeah, because I guess one of the big things with being software defined like that is you can really adapt and, and adopt new hardware as, as quickly as it comes to market, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's that's the benefit. You get really the lowering of the cost of industry standard hardware coming very quickly to the customer and real value. A um, lot like what you see with compute Today, sure. I've got standard boxes I can buy, I can, I can load virtualization layer, and I can, I can deliver it on the compute side, but we don't see that yet on the storage side as much. Okay, makes sense, okay, take us through it. Okay, so our technology is cluster-based, and so we have at least four nodes, which are just servers, that have a CPU, network, memory, disks in them, and then we, we aggregate them together with software. So we have intelligent software in here. So this is the hardware layer, and it is important, but it's really the software that makes this thing all work as one unit. Sure. And so the Cumulo software has multiple layers to it. And the most interesting layer as it applies to the hardware is what we call the scalable block store. Okay. So the scalable block store is this ground up approach that we had that we started seven years ago when we developed this technology to write directly to the drives. Mm -hmm. And so there's no file system in the way. We are writing bare to those drives. We don't even use a partition map. We write bare to those drives. Okay. So we're getting the full performance of those drives without having a proprietary image that runs that. We're actually a user space application, so we have flexibility in where we can be deployed at the same time. Okay, so that's really interesting because so even though you run on top of Linux, you're actually your I/O is direct to the hardware itself. Exactly, we think of Linux as really as a hardware abstraction layer that lets us run in lots of different places. Gotcha. And so that means I can run on a Dell and HPE, or I can run an AWS and GCP, and I give real flexibility to my customer, uh -huh. but uh, I still at the same at the same time give real performance and get all the value I can out of the hardware underlying that system. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, good. And so we have these other layers in the system, uh, but the scalable block store is really what applies to how we're talking about hardware here. Okay. And so we work really hard to create an engine inside of Cumulo that allows us to deliver new hardware very quickly. And that's going to have some announcements today that I want to talk about around that. Okay. Um, and so I'm very excited about that. But first, I'd like to talk about a little bit of trends that we're seeing in the industry. Yeah, let's do that. So. In the industry, you're seeing really a huge drop in, in flash prices. So there's even the last quarter, we've seen about a 30% drop in the cost of flash, which is really quite phenomenal. Yeah. And there's a few drivers of that. There's an oversupply in the industry right now. There's also QLC drives, and the TLC vendors are kind of fighting to be the, the SSD of choice. Sure. And then you're also seeing that NVMe is now shipping more than SATA and SAS SSDs. So yeah. we've hit that inflection point. So going forward, NVMe is the only way to go. Right, yeah, sure. And when we built our all flash product to start, we started with NVMe. We were the first file product to do NVMe and scale out. And it, it really has to be done ground up. The way you interact with NVMe drives is very different than the way you interact with these other drives. And to get the full performance and value out of those takes a really a ground up approach to be able to. But that comes back to your the way you guys have built the software, right? Exactly. That, that you can do that so quickly. Exactly. Yeah. So the the other thing that this relates to is how things are managed today and where they're going in the future. Okay. So when we look at traditional layouts of, of people dealing with a file store, there's often a flash layer or a very expensive flash fast tier here. And then there's a disk layer in here. Mm -hmm. And then usually that's tiered to tape. And that was kind of the traditional approach sure. to the problem. Yeah. So now what we're seeing as a trend is a lot of systems are, are tiering to the cloud, which right. 
doesn't really lower cost, but it kind of simplifies things in sure. some ways. Um, but most of those storage systems treat cloud as just another tier and not really a place to run an active workload, which right. is really where most of the value from the cloud actually is. Yeah, we call it the using it as a digital dumping ground. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So in addition to that, with the trend of flash dropping, we're seeing a compression here where the, where the disk-based systems are becoming less and less common. Yeah. But longer term, we really believe that there's that people don't want tiers. They want they want no more tiers. They want one Thing. stack yeah. of it's all my file, and I want it to be online. Right. And given the modern architectures of I need to be able to have my data available all the time and in multiple locations, we see that being two multiple locations. So you've got one on-prem location, you got maybe one in another data center, mm -hmm. maybe one in AWS and GCP, and you can decide where those live. And, and how much of it you need to be in those locations depending gotcha. on what your environment looks like. Yeah, and what we're seeing is people will have this AWS and GCP and use different capabilities of each cloud for different reasons. Exactly. Yeah. They're offering different things there, whether it's G uh, G GPUs or whether it's a AI as a service of some kind or right. ML, and they want to be able to take advantage of those. Right, yeah, that makes sense. So the drivers around this are, are really an increase in the amount of files that people are being asked to manage, but right. not really any change in the amount of people they get to manage that, right? right? Yeah, that's flat. Yeah. yeah, and then we're seeing a lowering of cost of the underlying hardware over time. Right. And then combined with that is people want to get value out of their file. They don't want, I mean, really businesses are designed, defined by their files. Their, their data defines the value, their IP, how you, how you um, build your thing or how you, how you track your customer. That's all value and they want to get more value out of it. And so having things be offline isn't really something anybody wants anymore. They want to get as much value out of that as possible. Yeah, yeah. And so all that drives towards this flattening process. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I, we're even seeing now where there's some AI stuff coming on the market. Like, you know, now it's, you know, how how, how quickly can you answer my questions? And now we're right. even seeing, oh, these are the questions you should be asking. Right? Yeah. You know, so it's, it's that market is just really interesting. Oh, it's it's super interesting. And I'm yeah. seeing this on actual mobile devices where you're doing ML on the device. It's right. crazy. Yeah. Um, so it's really cool. Uh, so. On the platform side, we've got some new announcements. Okay. Let's so, uh, so in our family, so we we run on Dell, HPE, AWS, GCP, and those systems are what I would refer to as tailored. So, while while you know you can put anything in here, it's important to know the software, the the, the storage software well enough to figure out what the right amount of that the memory is, the okay. CPU, the network, the disk. And if, you, if you're just putting anything in it, you're really not getting the value out of software defined. So we tailor these configurations, whether it's our first party or whether it's with HP or Dell, we're tailoring that configuration, but we're not customizing. We're not putting sheet metal in there, right. bending anything. We're not, putting, yeah, we're not putting yeah. proprietary cards in there. So we want it to be all our values in the software. We want that software to be able to run anywhere. Gotcha. So we're very conscious of like, I'm not going to adopt some new technology if it really isn't mainstream yet. Gotcha, okay. Um, so to that point, we have three families uh, that we sell as Cumulo hardware. One is what we call the P series, so that's our all flash performance system. Okay. And that was built, uh, we were the first to market with an all flash file system on NVMe. That system has 24 NVMe SSDs and 400 gig network cards, 100 gig network ports on it. Okay. So it is a screamer. Right. Um, and so that system today comes in uh, two configurations. One we call the P, uh, oops, 23. T, which is 23 terabytes, that's how we simply name our systems today, mm -hmm. uh, and the 92T, which is 92 terabytes. Right. And then we have another family we call the C-series. So this is using disk, but it has flash in front of it. And so the data is written to flash first, we cache very aggressively on the flash, and so in, in reality, most of customers' workloads is served completely from flash or memory in their interactions. So, right. so it really kind of gives the best of both worlds the economics of spinning disk with a lot of the performance of flash. Okay. And so today, in the C family, we have the C72T, and this is a one-use system with 12 spindles in it, so it's really dense, right. but we're using relatively small drives in that configuration because uh, that's more focused on uh, customers that need more performance than a lot of capacity. Gotcha. And then we have the K family. So the K series is focused on nearline archive or what some people call an active archive. Yeah, yeah. So I don't have a lot of performance needs or maybe I've got a workload that has already tiering in it and I just want another tier to, to go to. Sure. Or there are some workloads that are purely not very performant, like video surveillance is a prime example yeah, of that, right? Yeah. And so we have the K144T, my handwriting is not fantastic. Um, and so what we're announcing today is all of these configurations are getting bigger drives. Okay. So today we are going to put a 14 terabyte drive in both of these. So we're going to end up with a K168T. 
Okay. And a C one sixty eight T. Okay. And then now the, when we're saying one sixty eight T, that's per node. Capacity. Per node, okay. right? Yeah. So and you start with four, right? And yeah. you can go big from there. So gotcha. we're talking multiple petabytes of scale sure. on these systems. Very all quickly. Way. Very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then on the all flash family, we're now bringing the largest NVMe. Uh, SSD, the 7.68 terabyte drive out. Okay. So that translates when you put 24 into a box to 184 terabytes in a 2U system. Wow. Okay. And the beauty of that is that is delivering a phenomenal amount of performance in just even four of these nodes. Oh, yeah. Um, and so the question is is now the time for file to move to flash? And I think it absolutely is. Um, and there's a few drivers around that. One of those is that with this economic change, with this system, mm -hmm. we're able to drop the cost enormously to the point that we're able to sell per terabyte what we were selling spinning disk-based solutions wow. for 36 months ago. Huh. So it has been a big game changer and we're sure. seeing more and more customers driven not not just because they want flash but because they've got a mandate to move to flash. They want to get spinning disk out of their data, data centers right. for various reasons. Some of them are purely cost savings from a data center cooling powering perspective. Sure. We're also seeing that like, you know, density is going to get larger pretty soon. SSDs are going to get bigger than hard drives, right? So right. that helps with the data center cost problem. Yeah. Uh, but it also has less failures. There's just a lower failure rate on SSDs in general. So when right. you've got a storage system with hundreds of disks, if those are disks or SSD based, you're going to have less time. You got to go into the data center and have someone right. swap a drive. Yeah, it right? makes total sense. Yeah. And then the other one is performance, right? The, the, obviously, all flash delivers performance, and you don't have to worry about whether or not it came from a disk or was cache hit or not. Sure. And that really translates to future proofing, right? I don't have to worry about where my workload is going to be for this files for five years from now, right? Five years from now, that's like a guessing game to figure out where the, the performance profile I need, right? When right. I buy flash, I know that like I'm going to have tons of performance. And the performance we have delivered today is phenomenal, and we're just getting started. There is tons of headroom in the technology, the underlying hardware technology, to go 10 times faster than what we have today. Okay. So let me ask you this question. I, I, I haven't heard about this uh, level of pricing yet. How, how are you guys able to do this? So we, because we're software defined and we built the system from scratch, we can quickly adopt these drives. So because these are already shipping chassis and configurations, to bring a bigger drive into a system literally is about a two month process for us. We got to get the drives, we got to put them in, and we got to run them through a certification cycle. Sure. And that's really about all it takes. And so that really allows us to deliver on what people call the commodity curve, right? We're running on standardized hardware that goes down and down over time, and we are working to create an engine to deliver that as fast as possible. Well, it sounds to me like you're kind of right on the front of the curve too, right? Yeah. You're, you're really getting the full benefit of the wave. So yeah, we're always looking for how to give more value to the customer as we are, again, software. And what I love about Cumulo is our incentives are making the software better. We're a software subscription, right? We're not making a bunch of money off the hardware. It's about the software and making the customer uh, get more value out of their storage. Got it. Okay. So let's go ahead and wrap up the video. But before we do, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Cumula, what your guys' uh, history is and where you're going. And then also, we need to explain what this guy's doing hanging out in the video. Sure. Uh, so I believe Cumulo is really uh, built to be the curators of people's file data, and it's really our mission. And so no matter where that file data goes 10, 20 years from now, we want to be the, cut, the company that people trust to store their file data and to get the best value out of their file data. Okay, great, and then? So the Grump Quad, I, I, I joined a, a couple years ago and I asked the question of, of what the Grump Quad is and the, the best answer I think I got that I really liked was that the Grump Quad's angry all the time because he's never satisfied with what we're delivering. He wants it to always be better and better for our customer. Oh good, well that's a perfect answer. Thanks very much. Thank you. So there you have it. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.